This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Saturday, November 23, 2013. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to an article written by Michael Yosef, many Americans, including Democrats, are very disgruntled with President Obama. But the real blame for many of our current messes lies beyond President Obama. Yosef writes, it's amazing how for years people should have seen the warning signs. They saw the unscrupulous ways that Mr. Obama conducted foreign and domestic policies. They saw how he pitted classes and races against each other. They saw how he squandered people's money on adventurous programs such as Solyndra, not to mention his and his wife's expensive vacations. And, of course, they saw how he favored Muslims over Christians and Arabs over Israelis. That is to say nothing of selling guns to Mexican criminals, the betrayal at Benghazi, and the mishandling of the Arab Spring. And yet, his loyal subjects follow him blindly, and his adoring media cover it up for him. He goes on to say there's nothing new under the sun, however. Two thousand years ago, the Roman philosopher Cicero opposed the dictatorship of Julius Caesar, and supported a return to the traditional Republican government. But Cicero knew that blame should be cast beyond Caesar. Cicero said, Do not blame Caesar. Blame the people of Rome, who have so enthusiastically acclaimed and adored him, and rejoiced in their loss of freedom, and danced in his path, and gave him triumphal processions. Blame the people who hail him when he speaks in the forum of the new, wonderful, good society, which shall now be Rome interpreted to mean more money, more ease, more security, more living fatly at the expense of the ind- industrious. History repeats itself, Yosef says. May God have mercy on America more than he had on Rome. His full article can be read on bcnn1.com. Second today, according to One News Now, two PC USA churches in Texas, Highland Park Presbyterian Church in Dallas, and First Presbyterian Church in Amarillo voted late last month to leave the national body. Members of Highland Park voted 1,337 to 170 to leave. FPC Amarillo members voted in similar overwhelming fashion, 438 to 16. The Dallas Church, cited as a reason for leaving the congregation's disagreement with the a la carte religious beliefs taken by the national body. An FPC Amarillo spokesman stated the church realized the direction and theological drift of the PC USA was not a good fit. Both churches chose to join ECO, a covenant order of evangelical Presbyterians. Carmen Faudel LeBerg, who heads the Presbyterian Lay Committee, tells One News Now that the PC USA is feeling the pain of losing very large congregations. LeBerg was asked the latest count on the PC USA's membership. She responded, well, that's a moving target. Certainly, the official number from the end of 2012 was 1.8 million, which is more than a 100,000 member loss in one year. Certainly, the denomination cannot sustain that kind of trend. Third today, according to Charisma News, if Hobby Lobby President Steve Green gets his way, Students at an Oklahoma high school will be using a different kind of textbook next year. Green, the leader of the Oklahoma-based Christian retailer Hobby Lobby, has recommended a class for Mustang High School with a curriculum that focuses on the Bible. The curriculum would include an introductory course covering the Old and New Testaments and the Bible's impact on society. Three advanced courses would teach deeper history and cultural influence. Mustang Public Schools Superintendent Sean McDaniel invited Green to give a presentation of the teachings at the latest school board meeting. McDaniel says the class would strictly be an elective and still must go through a curriculum committee, the school board, and a vote before it is approved. Fourth today, according to Reuters, the American Civil Liberties Union on Friday urged a federal judge to halt a U.S. spy agency's sweeping collection of telephone data arguing that the program goes beyond what Congress authorized and violates the constitutional rights of Americans. If you accept the government's argument, you are accepting a dramatic expansion in the government's investigative power, 
Jamil Jaffer, a ACLU attorney, told U.S. District Judge William Pauley in Manhattan. The U.S. Justice Department argued that the National Security Agency's collection of such metadata is permissible under the law and essential to the government's counterterrorism efforts. Fifth today, according to the Los Angeles Times, moving to accommodate consumers frustrated by the troubled healthcare.gov website, the Obama administration announced on Friday that Americans would have an extra week to sign up for health coverage for 2014. The president's health care law originally required consumers to select a health plan by December 15 in order to be covered on January 1. Americans will now have until December 23 to select a plan, administration officials said in a conference call for reporters. The delay should allow all Americans who want to get a health plan to get coverage in time for next year, according to Jeff Zients, who is overseeing the White House's efforts to rescue the disastrous rollout of the Affordable Care Act. Zients also said that upgrades to the healthcare.gov website were on track to allow consumers to select a plan, even when enrollment surges as the deadline approaches. The one-week extension of the enrollment deadline is the latest in a series of changes the administration has made in the schedule for Obamacare. Thursday, officials announced that next fall's open enrollment period for coverage would start a month later than scheduled, in mid-November rather than mid-October. Six today, according to the Associated Press, the long-simmering battle over teaching evolution in Texas boiled over at a late-night meeting as the Board of Education extended preliminary approval of new science books for use in classrooms across the state, but held up one biology text because of alleged factual errors. With midnight looming, some of the state education board members singled out a textbook by Pearson Education one of America's largest publishers on Thursday. Many of the 20 concerns pertain to the theory of evolution. After a lengthy debate that got testy at times, the board, of vo the board voted to have three of its members pick a trio of outside experts to further scrutinize the textbook. If the issues can be resolved, it will win approval, but if not, it will be returned to the board for consideration at its January meeting. Seven today, according to the Times of Israel, German Foreign Minister Guido Westerwell will also fly to Geneva to attend negotiations about Iran's nuclear program. Germany's foreign minister announced late Friday on the heels of a U.S. State Department announcement that U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry would attend the talks. Kerry's wish to attend raised expectations that a deal to curb Tehran's nuclear program could be in the works. British Foreign Secretary William Hague announced late Friday that he was also flying to Geneva, and French diplomatic sources said Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius would join them. The United States believes there is a good chance that the deal will be signed this weekend. Kerry anticipates flying on to Israel if it is signed to immediately brief Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on the terms. Eighth today, according to AFP and the Wall Street Journal, U.S. plans to keep thousands of troops in Afghanistan for years to come were thrust into doubt yesterday when Afghan President Hamid Karzai unexpectedly called for delaying a long-term security deal until his successor is elected next year. The surprise move, which Mr. Karzai announced in a televised address before a special Afghan council that will advise him on the deal, cast a new cloud of uncertainty over the fate of the security pact. The administration warned that failure to complete the agreement by the end of the year could force the U.S. to pull out of Afghanistan altogether next year. The White House said it needed a swift decision from Mr. Karzai to start planning the footprint of forces to combat terrorism and to train Afghan forces after NATO combat troops leave at the end of next year. Nine today, according to CBS 6 Albany News, a federal appeals court has refused to toss out court rulings, finding that New York City carried out its police stop-and-frisk policy in a discriminatory manner. The second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled on Friday. Last month, an appeals panel had suspended the effects of a lower court ruling, 
The city had argued that the panel's decision to remove federal judge Shiera Shinlin meant it should also nullify her rulings. Shinlin ruled in August that police officers sometimes carried out stop and frisk unconstitutionally by discriminating against minorities. The court's action appears to spoil the city's bid to get Shinlin's rulings tossed before a new mayor sympathetic to her viewpoint takes office in January. Tenth and finally today, according to NBC New York, Police said four men are being held for an alleged assault on a man who was walking down a Brooklyn street early Friday and says he overheard them talking about the knockout game before he was punched. The four suspects, aged 28 to 38, faced charges of third-degree assault after allegedly attacking the man on 18th Avenue in Barrow Park. A number of assaults in Brooklyn, New Jersey and Washington, D.C. have drawn attention in recent weeks that authorities say may be inspired by the violent game. The object is to target unsuspecting pedestrians with the intention of knocking them out with one punch. Police have said some of the attacks are being investigated as hate crimes. Victims tend to be white or Jewish, and in New York City, the suspects have all been black. Police did not disclose the races of the suspects in Friday's attack. However, the 24-year-old victim is both white and Jewish. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Psalm 100, 4 and 5 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.